Hi everyone, hope you're having a great day, great week. Today is the first video of my menopause series where I'm going to discuss the different symptoms of menopause and how to tackle them. A few tips that may help you be able to manage your symptoms a little better. So today I wanna to talk about menopause and anxiety heart palpitations, racing heart, um, all those things that kind of go hand in hand when you're experiencing uh, anxiety from the hormonal changes in your body. First off, heart palpitations can be different than actual anxiety, but they can cause you to have anxiety. Um, the different symptoms of anxiety in menopause, I would say, is palpitations, your heart skipping a beat, uh, your heart fluttering, your racing, your heart begins to race, um, all these things. And also there's anxiety that's associated with that. Sometimes it could be completely um, separate and sometimes it is kind of all wrapped together. I wanna, oh, I also need to, to, to have a medical disclosure. I am not a doctor, nurse, medical professional. These are uh, my opinions. So if you're having any type of medical issue, you need to seek medical attention and medical advice. This is my story, my research, what's happened in my life, that being said, um, most women, when they start to experience all these s scenarios, if they've never experienced any of them, they obviously go rushing to the doctor or the hospital because it's something they are not familiar with. And um, it could be quite upsetting and quite you could become quite fearful of it because it's uh, something you're you've never had to deal with in the past. And um, women like myself who have suffered from anxiety for many, many years, I started suffering with anxiety as a child and then it progressed uh, in my teen years and then it turned into severe panic attacks and uh, escalated to all kinds of different um, levels depending on the season in my life. Uh, I was always a very fearful child, but then during the hormonal changes of puberty, I started experiencing panic attacks. So um, when your hormones are shifting or moving rapidly, your body doesn't know how to adjust so quickly or your body lets off certain chemicals and certain hormones in your body that trigger the fight and flight scenario. If you're experiencing heart palpitations, your heart is fluttering, any of those uh, scenarios, first off, I would suggest going to the doctor and making sure that your heart is working properly. Get, do your blood work, do, do an EKG, whatever the doctor recommends to do. But some of the times it may not be a heart situation at all, and it's just good old menopause, pre-menopause, shining its ugly little face at us. So if you begin to experience anxiety, heart palpitations, uh, your heart's missing a beat, your heart's fluttering, your heart is racing, especially in the mornings, you wake up, your eyes open, your heart is like going at a million miles an hour. If you ex start to experience that, you've gone to the doctor, they say, it's your heart is fine then and they you know sometimes tell you it's premenopause and menopause sometimes they don't even give you that information a lot of things that can contribute to this uh, we need to look at what is contributing to these feelings of anxiety and heart palpitations and whatnot now Sometimes your hormones are just out of whack and um, they're causing you to have really bad hot flashes, night sweats, and um, 
when you're sweating so much all day and all night, then you're becoming dehydrated and your electrolytes most likely are not where they're supposed to be, which could cause palpitations and your heart to race. So um, if your sodium and your potassium is off or you have low magnesium, your electrolytes are just not where they're supposed to be, it could cause heart palpitations, heart racing, anxiety, it could cause all of that. Believe it or not, hot flashes could cause <laughs> a slew of problems. You want to really concentrate on not getting dehydrated. And I recommend that you first thing in the morning, you drink one or two of these. I, I try to drink two within the first hour that I'm awake. Speaking of, I need to drink some water. So as soon as you wake up, you drink your water, one, one to two of these at least. And then throughout the day, you want to make sure you're drinking two to four ounces of water per hour. So for me, I drink, I try to drink 10, cup, 10 glasses of water a day or five of these. That's how I measure it. I, will, I actually number them. I actually write on them, one, two, three. So at the end of the day, I know how many I drank. And because I can't drink water after 6 p.m., because then I'll be up the entire night going pee, like all night on the hour, I have to stop drinking my water by 6, 6.30 p.m. That's my cutoff if I wanna have a, a, a decent sleep at night. So I need to get all my water in from when I wake up till 6 p.m. at night. In the afternoon, I always try to drink a cup of Pedialyte, eight ounces, eight ounces of Pedialyte. I could sip it in the afternoon and it helps me tremendously. It's just like, you could do Gatorade also if you'd like. Pedia, uh, Pedialyte for me has all the electrolytes, so it's great for myself. Again, make sure you okay all this with your doctor. I don't want you to not check with the doctor for you know any of these things. Making sure that you are hydrated is going to, I know it sounds like it's just too good to be true, like how it, I'm telling you, you're gonna feel a difference. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, you're gonna feel a difference. Then for me, I can't do no caffeine because I would not be able to get out of bed, plain and simple. I just would have zero energy. I wouldn't be able to do it. So I have my coffee, weak, weak coffee in the morning. And um, I, if you're having severe anxiety and really bad like panic attacks or really bad palpitations, I would say, no coffee, no tea that's caffeinated, nothing caffeinated. No soda pop, no Coca-Cola, no Pepsi. No soda with caffeine. No, not even decaf coffee. No caffeinated teas. And I would honestly reduce the sugar as much as possible because it's also a stimulant. So just, I know it's a lot to take in, but you gotta try to do it. And then um, my third suggestion for me, not only deep breathing and learning how to breathe when I'm going through that, because when it hits, you want you, you could go into a panic mode, which will then trigger a panic attack. So you wanna try to center your mind and your thoughts, and you wanna try to do deep breathing. But also for me, what helps is prayer, in the morning, in the evening, throughout the day. If I, I need to have that time to pray and get focused and connected to the Lord. And if for me, 
that's imperative. It, it helps me tremendously. It's something that I wouldn't trade for anything. It's just like so helpful and powerful for me. Also, um, exercising, even if it's 30 minutes of walking a day, I know you're probably sick of hearing these things and you're like, okay, exercise, water, no, none of this is gonna take away this horrifying feeling. That's stupid, I don't want a deep breathing, I don't want this, I want something that just takes this away. It's not that simple. It's, it's just, it's not that simple. So you're going to have to do things that help you get through this season in your life. I know uh, there's medications out there. Uh, there's the antidepressants, there's Xanax or whatnot. I feel like that should be last resort. Like last resort. I personally don't use them, but I'm not, I don't judge anybody. Whatever you feel is right for you, you know you, and you need to do what's right for you. But for me, I feel like first you need to try to do these other, uh, you know, other solutions or other avenues before you go to last resort. Um, music is unbelievable for me. I crank up something I love and try to just walk for a half hour listening to my music and it really helps the anxiety. It really does. Put on some good Rod Stewart and take a walk and just like try to get into a positive outlook and know that this is all going to pass. You have to realize that it seems like tremendous and you're not going to be able to get through this, but you will. You will get through it. And like I said, prayer, faith, that's number one for me. Deep breathing, music, exercise, making sure your electrolytes are in check because when your electrolytes are not in check, your heart is gonna start palpitating and that's gonna trigger anxiety and that could eventually trigger panic attacks and any, you know, a slew of other things. So if these tips help you, please let me know down below. If you have tips and you have certain things that's helped you tremendously, or even just helped you a little bit, you know, comment down below, let us know. We need to interact, we need to be a community, we need to help each other, because this is gonna be a long journey. You know, pre-menopause and menopause, it, for a lot of us, it could last 10 years, and just the thought of that is like horrendous, right? But when you, when, if we grow a community and we're going through this and walking through this together, then I feel like it's a little bit easier when, when you have friends that are going through the same thing and you can connect with them and talk to them about it. I definitely want to be, I definitely want to be here for you and, and I would love to have people here for me so that we could interact and talk about this. So please subscribe, comment down below. Again, Leave me your Twitter or Instagram handles down below so I could follow follow you. And uh, yeah, and we could just do this thing together. So love you guys. I will see you tomorrow. And we will discuss another fun symptom. I hope this helped. Bye.